Welcome back, everybody, to Shenanigans. It is nighttime. Why don't I get perception checks for each of your watches? In fact, are you taking watches? There's only two player characters. You need at least need six hours of sleep. Four. I need four. Why do you need four? I mean, because I specifically need less sleep. Did you take some bullshit skills and powers nonsense so you only need four hours of sleep? Yes, I did. All right. That's fine. You need four <laughs> hours of sleep. Everyone else needs six minimum. Well, not really. You can go on low amounts of That's sleep. That's true. That's true. You don't have to sleep at all if you don't want to. You know uh, full well, Neil. I Well, you don't perform very well without sleep, but it's possible to input data and expu output data with zero sleep. Right. It's just confused data. Uh, so, who's on first watch, who's on second watch? Well, I'll try keeping watch for the first four. Okay, give me a perception check, please. Oh boy, I wonder what I should roll. Oh wait. Hmm. Aww. So close, Al? No, Joe. So, Joe. let's see what this is. That's good. That'll work. That'll work. All right, Joe. Describe to me the scene at night while you're, where, while everyone's camping. What's it look like? Well, I imagine we've managed to get a fire going mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah. And we're just, they're all pretty much sleeping, and I'm just sitting up waiting to, for something to happen, looking around. But the fire is getting a little low, and it's not that bright. All right. All right. All of a sudden, there's a twang of a bow as a shot fires your way with a natural 15 to hit. The arrow thuds into oh, your side, hit. painfully, for a single point of damage. Um, and I think with a yell, you probably wake everybody up unless someone has the light sleeper or the heavy sleeper trait. Rob, no? Oh, okay. Nope. I took character flaw greed, as you can probably tell by now. <laughs> Don't you have to make some sort of roll if you're not going to act greedy ever? How oh, have no. I not been acting greedy? No, you have been acting greedy. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the how I can manipulate your flaws against you. But that's, I guess, maybe for another time. Anywho, the arrow strikes you. I don't think you. you're having to manipulate it against me. I think I'm, <laughs> I've got a potentially magic sword that I took out of. <laughs> okay. Um... So the arrow strikes you, right. you kind of flip your head up and notice two more goblins running straight at you. Uh, but they roll a six and an All eight. Right, I get even, my spear out. Yeah, even with the surprise round and everything going on, I'm pretty sure six and an eight don't hit you. Uh, back attack no. at most with surprise would be an 11, but that's still a miss. So uh, why don't we go to an initiative order? Everybody roll a d10 plus your weapon speed, and we'll throw some goblins on the table. All right, let me look up. Uh, for this spell. It's too big of a goblin. We want. There we go. One, two. Three, somewhere in the woods. They're kind of coming at you like this. Um, I think PCs are gonna look something like this. So we're gonna say the guy with the cape is Average Joe. The guy with the book is Elliot. 
And the two NPCs are gonna be the guy with the axe and the mole is the old man. Um, seems most appropriate. <laughs> and the uh, guy with the, the cart and the turnips is gonna be the Minotaur. Um, all right, so that's how the battle okay. is set up. Okay, is it just my display, or are you just superimposing these over the map? I'm just imposing the... them over the map. Oh, okay. I'm being lazy. Or innovative? I don't know. Uh, so the first enemy goes at initiative nine, but Joe beats that. All right, so two goblins just attacked me. Right. So I'm going to try to do attack a goblin. Okay, give me a roll to hit these goblins. Nope. That will not not do it. All right. Uh, next in the initiative order is the very same goblin who just struck you. He takes a swipe with his short sword and rolls a natural three. Complete and utter failure. Uh, next up is, is Rob. All right, uh, I drop an entangle on them. Which ones? The, the two. The two goblins. I, I can't see any others, right? Uh, there's one up to the upper left. Entangle's pretty big. Will it reach all the way to him? No, he's like 60 feet away, unless Entangle is that big. Actually, he's uh, 34 miles, but it's fine. It's a 40 foot cube. <laughs> oh, no, I said 60 feet. Perfect. He's just outside of range. Um, so you entangle those two. They get saving throws versus spell. A 10 and a 15 are both failures. Uh, they are entangled. That's what entangle looks like, by the way, if you were wondering. Okay. Um, and next up is one of these entangled goblins who's gonna make a melee right. attack. Uh, and I, I, oh. I shout out um, after I cast the entangle. Uh, Joe, Joe person, step back. They can't get you. Uh, eliminate, eliminate range threats. Speaking of range, All well, right. first off is the the melee guy with Joe who misses, and then the ranged guy changes targets. He's going after your donkey, Joe. He's aiming a shot which is a Aww. 19, a natural 19, uh, shoots your donkey for donkey. six points of damage. My God. My donkey. Your donkey is wounded. Um, and that is the whole round. Let's go to initiative for the next round. First goblin goes at seven. All right, so can I... Can I see the other? It's nighttime goblin? and he's out in the woods shooting at you. So no, you can see like arrows coming from the darkness, but you can't actually pinpoint the guy, the, the goblin who's 60 feet away in the dark woods at night. All right. Uh, wow, you guys rolled terribly for initiative. All right, average Joe, the two goblins next to you make attacks. Uh, you one didn't was step a step back from them. He didn't have time. He already took his action I and could. had just. Oh, uh, okay. One rolls a five. One rolls a nat twenty. This is the end of average Joe. What's your AC? Oh, I'll be a crit. All right. Uh, like fourteen. Two d six damage. The short sword. We might just see this episode over. Uh, seven points of damage. Very average. Very, very middle of the road. Are you unconscious? Down to one. Uh, well, the two goblins miss. Um, and it is your both your turns simultaneously. I'll go after the into the woods, trying to find the arranged guy. All right. Uh, so I flip to Infravision, same thing he's using to to see us. Oh yeah, you can totally and, spot him. You're fine. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna yeah. sling him. 
Okay. Uh, make me roll the hit with your sling. Fourteen will. Uh, no, that's your initiative. Oh my god! You <laughs> crit the crap out of him. Roll me triple damage dice, or uh, yeah, triple. Come on, D8 minus one HP goblin. Nope, nope. The sling hits the goblin square in the forehead, splitting its skull open, leaking blood and brains all over the forest floor for some lovely little insect to come eat up later. Uh, Which one did he kill? The archer. So you like oh. run into the woods and oh. then like come over this body that's just like dead with blood and brains all over the place. Can I head back then? Sure. I take it you took a disengage to avoid taking yeah. attacks of opportunity. So you it, just have movement yeah. anyway. So you can check it out and then head on back. Uh, All right. Let's roll initiative for the next round. Actually. All right. The goblin's can bow. I pick up the, the, the goblin's bow and arrows? Yes. All right. I'll do that. What's the initiative of a bow? Seven. Um, initiative rolls. Wow. Good job there, Rob. You go first. Yo, uh, Joe Person, return here for healing and then do a sweep. I'll, I'll keep a lookout for now. Are you not making any attacks? Um, I'm gonna put a one of the two that is um, entangled. I'm gonna put a uh, sling bullet into him here. Hopefully, give me a roll of hit. They have a penalty of two to their AC. That'll hit it. All right. Four, Four points of damage. The goblin dies. Ah! All right. And to the other one, I'm, I'll try Orcish. I don't speak goblin. Um, I'll say in common and in in um, Orcish, lie down in the entangle unless you want the same thing. Uh, well, the goblin goes, and it ain't lying down in no entangle. It's seen that trick before. It knows what's going on. Actually. It's pretty terrified. Maybe it should make a morale check. Yeah, I withdraw. I rescind that. It doesn't know the lie down in the entangle trick. It drops its weapons and lies down in the entangle. All right, that shit. I'm imagining that would forfeit any further saving throws. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna. We can step out of combat now. The goblin has surrendered himself to your embrace. All right. That so I'll sounds return. a little disturbing, Neil. <laughs> I mean, that's on you, then. It sounds perfectly normal to me. All right, well, I don't know that there's no more goblins in the darkness, so if... You got information. Uh, you average... can scan the area. They, they could be hiding. And stuff, they could though. be hiding. You're right. Um, Maybe they're hiding. Uh, does Joe come over? Do you come over to get healing? Yeah, I'll make my way over if you tell me to. All right. So I guess on the next round, I'll drop a, a uh, CLW on you for five. Yeah. How many are you at right now? I'm at six out of nine. All right. Um, I think well, I'll ask say. you, how, how bad off are you? Can you do a sweep for the area? Yeah, I'll go take a look around real quick. Uh, thank you. That... All right, Magical I'll... healing is something else. All right, I'll guard the package. Oh, all right. I'll go uh, over to the old man. Uh, where, what is the old man doing? The old man is uh, still asleep. Didn't wake <laughs> up through the whole fight. All However, right. the 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 uh, the man, uh, the other guy, the turnip cart driver, is awake and hiding behind a turnip wheel. I'm not worried about him. He's not paying. He's not the client. 
All right. The, the client's Although still if asleep. I'd known he was giving out, well, I'm not saying that to him, but if I'd known he was giving out silver daggers before, I would have picked up turnips. Anyway. I'll take a sweep of the area. Do I find anything? You don't find any of the hidden goblins, no. Okay. I go back to that dead one in the woods, the archer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See if he has any coins or valuables on him. No. Um, yeah, the goblins have some coins. They have... for my dice here? Oh, no, that's... Drops die. The goblins have seven, eight, nine gold on them total, uh, all of them combined. Wow. All right. Yeah. I, I say to average, all right, standard split. Wait, say what? Standard split. I know we should have clarified uh, it beforehand. What's the standard split? 50 50? Yes. Ah, um, how do we do that with a nine gold? I can make change. Oh, okay. Um, all right, I'll take four. You give me five silver. Done. Okay. Okay. Well, consider the healing gratis since you're apparently the tank. Well, thank you. I don't know what a tank is, but... All right, how bad is the donkey? Wounded by six? I imagine in real life, animals don't like to carry people if they're wounded in any way. This is true. All right, I'll go and drop the second CLW on the, the donkey. Okay. Ooh, donkey is back to full. Hey, perfect. And I think I just spend time calming down the donkey. All right, the donkey chills out. Um, and the rest of the night passes uneventfully. The next day, you guys wake up and you find yourself on the road just where you left yourselves that night. Um, Murray uh, wakes up well before the rest of you. Uh, But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, His name. The other guy's name. I've already forgotten the other guy's name. We didn't name the turnip cart driver, did we? No, we didn't. Perfect. Uh, Let's call him Jeb. Jeb. Perfect. Uh, He's very low energy turnip cart driver. You know, he's just very bland and boring and unlikable. Uh, Yet with an exclamation point for some reason. (laughs) Uh, You guys continue on the road down towards Kershwick. You get most of the way there when yet again, a monster of some sort steps across your path. This time it's a little bit different. You see on the right side of the road, there are five goblins, one of which is haggling with a bugbear who's on the left side of the road. They're speaking back and forth in goblin very quickly. Uh, I don't know if we can handle that. <sighs> it does seem a bit out of our league in present company. Have they seen us, or are they ignoring us? No, no, they they haven't seen you yet. They're very busy uh, arguing over something. Do any of you speak let's, goblin? No. Let, let's go back. No, just kobold, orcish, and Japanese, and dwarvish. No, well, and wait, and can you elvish. list those languages again? Let me pull it up here. I put my points into, where is it? Orc, Cobalt, Dwarvish, and Japanese. And then I speak Elvish right, because I, I'm an yeah, elf. You, Japanese is in there. I thought I was mishearing things. Uh, I told you, in order to support my character concept of an 80s businessman, <laughs> I put a point into Japanese. 
He's not going to order sushi like an idiot. He's ready for the the trans-Pacific century. All right. <laughs> it never came up, though, but Al actually spoke Al as a language. Al is its own language. Yep. It was a bonus language he spoke. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, okay, so these guys are arguing back and forth. What are you guys going to do about it? Turn the card Let's around. Say, let's get off the road. Well, if you, your cart is uh, pretty janky, it's already been tipped over by a horse once today, and you've, you're looking at the terrain off the road, and you're feeling like this turnip cart, it ain't going to make it. I'm just trying to turn the cart around on the road as quickly as possible and just go back down the road. Okay, so you turn around. Okay, you have to start right, to turn the cart around. Um, it's going to take a little okay, bit of time I'm going to say, to before any of that starts happening, I'll say to Joseph, uh, do a classic bait and hide. I'll, I'll step off the uh, side of the road into the bushes. Okay. And I'm prepping in Tangle. I don't know what that means. I'm leaving. All right. So the argument reaches a, a fever pitch when one of the goblins spots you and uh, turns and points. Uh, the party of goblins and the bugbear all turn to look at you, Joe, as you've just gotten the cart turned around and the donkey's starting to move in the other direction. But the goblins and bugbear see you and the bugbear begins to stalk quickly in your direction. All right, I tell the uh, turnip driver to take the cart down the road. He does with all About haste. A mile. Yep. Uh, the bugbear comes over and says in common, Excuse me, sir. Yes. Mm. Could you. Mm, Solve a problem for us. What what kind of problem do you have? This goblin uh, take my money and promised me a date with his cousin's uh, half brother's sister, who is a bugbear. Oh. Yeah, he he said he would set it up for five gold pieces. Now he's saying she doesn't want anything to do with me. And I tell him I want my money back. And he says money is done deal. We need mm. arbitrator. Do they speak common too? One of the goblins nods. The one that was arguing nods a little bit. Oh, all right. I, I can contain myself no longer. I step out and go, what? You... Stipulated a contract and then violated it? Do you have any idea how many statues you've broken? This this bugbear could take you to court and he could have your entire tribe. What? Statue? We don't break no statue. You promised a service you failed to deliver. I tried. So you pay for attempt, not pay for uh, end goal. You know, it's like no, uh, he didn't pay you to try. He paid you to get a date with with your this this person. Mm, mm, you give me money, I invest in stock opportunity. Stock opportunity go bust. Your problem, not mine. Mm -mm, he. Uh -uh. I, I, say to the I bug invest bear. money in attempt date. No, no, no succeed. I say to the bugbear, did you, did you pay for him to try or for him to set it up? Yeah, uh, we, we need to know, did you promise him a date or did you say you would uh, try to get him a date? Bugbear says he promised date. And the goblin says, I said, try. Oh. Right, well, this is simple. We'll just look at the wording of the contract. They shake their heads. No, no contract, no paper. Oh. Hmm. 
Wait, you entered into a business arrangement with no contract or paper? They all just kind of nod, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't think they can read or write like I, I can't either. They all tried. We, well, I don't know how to make paper. Do you guys know how to make paper? They shake their heads. Yeah. You see, so, sometimes you, you just got to work paper. by your word. You buy it from some sort of artisan person. Do you guys have an artisan person? They all shake their heads together. Well, it's a little unison. late now. I mean, they, they need to have already had the contract written. Well, yeah, but they didn't have anyone to buy it from. Fine, I'll take out my scroll case. I'll remove a piece of paper. I have five. And I go, if you're interested, I can sell you this piece of paper for future contracts. Does it solve problem? You write no. down... Right now, you two are arguing because one of you said, believes that you said try, and the other one says do. Mm. The bugbear nods, understanding. The goblins look back and forth at each other, not quite understanding. If it was uh, written down, then you would know. Imagine right, right. if you could no, have no, your I, conversation. I, I get, I get. I am. Crap. Crawdod, you know. Crawdod, no. All but, right. but, no solved problem of existing right. dispute. All right. Well, so. there's, we'll just use ancient adventurer wisdom. Oh. Everyone perks up at this, especially the goblins. So I look, and you might be interested. He was, in fact, a short little green person. One of the greatest adventuring mentors of all time. That feel like racial racial slur, says the goblin. No, he was one of the greatest mentors of all time. Well respected. And this particular adventure former adventurer, adventuring mentor, made a very clear statement that I believe applies directly to this case. You're saying that you promised to try, he said do. This this adventuring mentor said there is no try. I feel like that's a nice concept, but not really applicable to real world actions. The goblins look very confused, the bugbear looks very confused, and then slowly says there is no try, only do, and he no do, so I get money back. Yes. Bugbear crosses his arm and looks to the goblin with a satisfied grin on his face, um, and then barks something in goblin. Rawr! Rawr, rawr, rawr. The goblins look a little bit concerned. One of them spits on the ground at your feet, Elliot, um, and lets out a string of what can only be goblin curses. There's, It's very clearly just a string of obscenities that it's uh, throwing at you. Wait a minute. I have an idea. How much gold was paid? Five gold. How could you how could you forget any number involved with gold? Five. Five. All right. So there seems to be a mix up here, correct? Uh between what you two thought would happen. Mm. What if uh half was returned to Mr. Belgbear and you kept half? There was clearly a misunderstanding between you two, so you just both settle for half. There's no way to go back and figure out exactly what either of you said. There's uh, an exchange of looks here. And why don't you give me a charisma check? All right. Uh, 
Is that a 25? Yeah. That's really good. They, they seem... Uh, they agree. And they nod their heads. And uh, the goblin hands back two gold coins, shuffles around in its pockets, and uh, hands over a small necklace of human ears. Um, the bugbear nods, puts the necklace of human ears around its head, pockets the coins, and then kind of waves its hand at you and says, Thank you! You have done much help. Hey, no problem. We're glad to help. All right. And I think that's it. I, I shake the bugbear's hand. The bugbear shakes your hand. Shake the goblin's hand. It shakes your hand as well. And start heading back down the road to get the cart. All right. Uh, what about you, Elliot? I mentioned if you want to avoid future disputes like this, you'll want some of this paper to get it down in writing. You want job as writer? As a personal contractor for, for me? Oh, no, I'm already a junior partner in Slum's Loan to meet him. I make you senior partner of Crab, Crab, and Crab. Interesting. Is there a corner office? Yes. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'll definitely have to get my people in touch with your people and we can we can see what's you know, get get something uh down in writing and uh you know, I'll take a look at it and compare it to my other current offers. Mm-hmm. He grumbles to himself, <sighs> gives a hefty sigh, and just kind of turns and walks away. Ignoring your your offer. Okay. Yeah, he's not too. He can't. Like he needs to hire you to help him write the contracts, and he can't write the contracts without hiring you to write the contracts. It's a a catch twenty two. Yeah. Um, so the bugbear heads out. Um. All right. Is that it? Moving on down the road. It looks like. You guys arrive at Kershwick. There's a, a large wood uh, stone bridge that you have to cross to get there. It's not a big deal. You cruise over the bridge, start to take the path toward it Kershwick. It is a big deal. I've had characters thrown off this bridge repeatedly in the same episode. It's a very regular bridge. It's not that big of a deal, you know. Um, Good times. Anyway, you come around the edge, and uh, there's a, a farmer just sitting on a fence, chewing on a blade of straw. Nods at you as you go by him, and gives a wave, and says, hello there. To which hello. Murray goes, why, hello there, son. How's it going today? Um, man starts to reply. And Murray finds himself in, well, you quickly find Murray in the middle of a long conversation between two very boring NPCs. It suddenly hits me and I say, whisper to Joe, oh dear God, the greatest gift is going to be friendship, isn't it? Well, I asked if it was satisfaction or feeling good and he said no, so. Now he's going to say it's friendship. I'll just wait and see. I trust he'll give me something worth our time. Then you're a very trusting individual. Well, yeah. Okay. I can't hire a magical fountain expert with friendship. I guess you guys just wait for the NPCs to finish their conversation. Very politely. We just start having our own conversation, Neil. All right. Then I just say, well, I mean, if you befriend the expert, take him out for a few drinks, ask him if he could help you. Give me a discount. Ask him if he could help you. He just might. Uh He might be give me an edge in negotiations if he's 
to be soft. So I think we just have a you guys have conversation. Yeah, it's fine. Eventually, everybody moves on, uh, and you find yourself in Kershwick. You've completed the task. You've gotten the old man to where he needs to go. He specifically requests a, a tavern here in Kershwick is the place where you drop him off. And as you're walking in, he gives you like he says, "Thank you, gentlemen. May I please buy you a, a round of drinks?" To show my appreciation. Absolutely, bourbon neat. Sure. Uh, he orders two, bur- three bourbon neats, and then kind of gives you a, a, a waiting gesture. Uses his double walking canes to head over to the table right next to yours and says, "Hello there. I'm looking for someone to get me to Coxport. Would any of you find?" Young ladies or gentlemen, be willing to get me all the way to Coxport? Wait, so the exact same man just came up to us and wants to hire us to take him to Coxport? No, no, the, the say, your guy is going to a different group of people saying he needs to get to Coxport. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like he's hiring the next group of people from Kershwick to get him to Coxport here. Um, I said, wait a minute, do you think he's just going to skip out on our payment? Hmm. Well, we'll ask him after he makes this deal with them. Uh, well, the people begin to ask about payment, and he says the same thing he did to you. He'll give you the greatest treasure in all the land if they really, really, absolutely need some sort of payment. But you know, Wait really, they should be He's doing offering it. Offering them our payment. Actually, he is. Yeah. There can't be two greatest treasures in all the land. What do you do about it? I'm going to walk right on up there. Excuse me, sir. You already offered us the greatest treasure in all the land. The adventurers that he's talking with take exception to this. Uh, One of them spits at the man's feet. The other just knocks a drink over towards him, which spills off and lands on the guy's shoes and says, You double-crossing son of a bitch. I knew I should have never trusted an old man like you. Come on, boys. Let's go find some other work. And they get up from the chairs they were sitting at and walk away. The old man looks at you with kind of sad eyes and says, well, I suppose now you'll have to take me to Co- to Coxport. We've, we've already completed our contract. You owe us the greatest treasure in all the land. You can't be offering it to them. Oh, but I can. Uh, it better not be friendship. Why would you say a thing like that? Don't you value friendship? Well, we've completed our contract. Where is the greatest treasure? Oh. Our payment is forthcoming. He looks over to you, Joe, kind of pleading eyes. I'm sorry, sir, but you uh, did offer us uh, some I sort of I suppose I did. I, I suppose I did. Very well. Uh, gather round, gather round. <clears throat> yes. He does like a, a big arms Jesus thing, kind of extending them to his sides, uh, and then takes a step forward and wraps you in a very large hug, Joe, and says, I pronounce you, Joe, to be my friend. You now have the greatest treasure in the whole land. Hmm. Well. Uh, You guys called it. Treasure is the greatest (laughs) friendship of all. What? Yes, that that, that, from the get-go, that was going to be the greatest treasure in the land, was the friendship. No, Neil, you said treasure treasure is the greatest greatest friendship friendship of all. (laughs) Whoops. Friendship is the greatest treasure in all the land. Oh. Now, treasure is the greatest treasure in all the land. No, no. Friendship is. Well, I can't say I'm a little disappointed. I came here for money, but I'll accept your friendship. Why, thank you. Now, as my friend, would you like to help me get to Coxport? I can't 
well, I can swim, but oh, I can't get you over the water. Oh, a ship? I can pay for a ship, but you know, there's always people trying to take advantage of an I'm old man. I'm pretty sure that ship isn't going to accept friendship as currency. Oh, no, no. I can pay for passageway. I can pay your passage, too. I'm quite wealthy, you know. Oh. Well... If you're One. quite wealthy, why are you yes. trying to pay us in life lessons? Oh, I'm trying to give you something more valuable than platinum. I thought you would appreciate this greatest gift in the world. Tell you what, as your friend, I'll let you keep the greatest gift in the world and just accept the platinum. Well, then you're not my friend if I keep the greatest gift in the world. Then I'm Tell offering me. you a discount to letting you keep it while I take the platinum. No, no, we've Fred, already exchanged Fred, gifts. Fred, Payment is sealed, yes. Yes. Where is the last stop in your journey? Oh, it's my niece's birthday. I'm trying to get there to give her her birthday card. My The last stop is her house in Coxport. What? Oh. Well, hmm. We we did get you here for friendship. How about a little bit of payment if we get you to her house? I uh, you're just you're not just going to help your friends? No, I will help, but I would like some it sounds like better. you don't want to be my friends. It sounds like you're trying to deprive me of the greatest treasure in all the land. I don't know why this character is so amazing to me, but I I really like Old Man Murray. Well. Fine, what do you say? fine, fine, fine. If we, we want to be crass and and deal with coins, then sure, I can pay you to take me to Coxport. All right. We need an amount. How does ten strike you? Ten what? What would you like ten of? Ten platinum would be wonderful. Ten diamonds, even better. That seems exorbitant. What if I give you each ten pieces of gold to get me to Coxport? It's a start. I'll accept that. How Not. much does passage but, to Coxport normally Oh, run? I'll cover the passage. I'm not a miser. You're going to have people working for you. You want to treat them well. That's what my grand grand grandfather always said. Hmm. I guess that's my great great clear, grandfather. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, hmm. tell you what. Is that ten gold per person, or oh, yes. for both of us? Yes, ten pieces of yeah. gold per person. Well, I'll accept nine and another hug when we get there. Oh, Just for that, I'll give you eleven and a hug. Oh, and he looks directly at Elliot. That's how you make a deal, young man. Besides, isn't it past your bedtime? Would your parents be concerned about you so far away from home? My parents are long dead. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Do you, do you have a guardian? Someone to take care of you? Or are, are you just a street urchin? Wandering from I money? take care of myself quite fine, thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it... What time is it, Neil? It's late. It, it takes two days to get here, yeah. Alright, how about we sleep for the night and then we'll, uh, then we'll head, charter a ship for tomorrow. Wonderful. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Um, and he books your rooms at the tavern here. And, uh, yeah. All right, next day rolls around. And you guys all meet up down by the docks district to go to Kershwick so this guy can deliver to his niece a happy birthday card in person. So that's the sort of grandpa he is, or uncle he is. Uh, where is our dock district music? Here we go. Um, okay, so you're down by the docks. The old man has booked passage for you on board a ship. But while all this is happening, um, the both of you, or maybe just one of you, just one of you, Joe, you witness someone a little bit down the dock, like far enough that it would be awkward to try and get their attention, like they wouldn't know who you were talking to. But someone down the docks is picking someone else's pocket. You see it happen before your very eyes. Rogue just goes over, like cuts some cords on someone's uh, belt while the person's in the middle of like handling something, takes the purse and just starts to walk away. I immediately try to go after the guy, yelling uh, to Elliot. Is your name? So like yes. down the dock towards the water. Elliot's Michael. Right? Yeah. So um, uh, so you start walking yeah. towards the person and yelling and making a, a big hubbub. Is that the the plan? No, no, I yell for Elliot. Oh, okay, for Elliot. Right. Why not? Yell to Elliot. And then say, that guy just stole a purse. And try going after him. Uh, I'll, I'll pursue. There might be a reward. All right. You go after this person. <laughs> uh, they're just walking down the dock towards you. Uh, and, well, I think at some point, Joe, you make eye contact with this person, right? Because you're walking after them, and they're coming towards you, and you're going towards them. Uh, and the guy sees you looking at him mm -hmm. and gives you kind of the, the what's up nod. What's up? Sir, I, I saw you steal that purse. Would you kindly return it? There's an awkward silence between the two of you. And uh, the gentleman sheepishly kind of bows his head turns around, walks back to the other person, says, <clears throat> sorry, I, sir, I, I think you, you dropped this. Here, here you go. Uh, hands it back and then just kind of walks away with his head downcast. All right, I, I try to f flag the thief down again. You can get him because they got to walk right past you a second time. All right, I'll say, why are you stealing, son? Uh, are you needing money that badly? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, are you going hungry? Not, not yet. But only, I mean, maybe today. I don't know. Depends on if there's an easier mark somewhere. I mean, uh, it depends if the soup kitchen's open. I mean, um, look, this, mm. this is really uncomfortable for me. I'm just gonna, gonna go. Listen, do you have any skills other than getting purses? Uh, like what sort of skills? Anything Lie. that could have you yeah. do honest work. Mm-hmm. You wanna... I got something to show you then. You wanna come with me? Two of you? No, I'm, I go, what, I'm, what are you, what are you trying to hire this one for, straight, Joe? So. I mean, he's clearly not a very skilled rogue if, if you spotted him. Hey, I've been pocket. doing this for a decade, and I ain't been caught yet. You just got caught right now. Not by the mm. law, and that's all that matters. 
You got caught by this guy who literally just got off the turnip truck. He gives an embarrassed look. You've clearly put him in his place. Listen, you've got to go and do something meaningful with your life. You can't just keep stealing from others in society. Well, I've got a thing I've always been passionate about, but I just didn't know, I didn't think I could ever make it, make a living out of it. But if you're so set on getting me straight, maybe you want to invest in my, in my, in my, uh, artistic practice. What kind? Are you you wanting to be a sculptor, a painter? Mm, better. What's better than sculpting or painting? Singer? Musician? Mm -mm, better than that. The greatest art form of all. Pie making. He shakes his head. But almost. Actually, that's nowhere near it. But I can make a pie, too. The greatest art form Ooh. in the whole wow. world. And then he immediately, like, starts miming as if he's, like, in a box. And Ooh. continues this, this miming. Uh, and then kind of, like, starts to mime his way down the street as if he's, like, stuck. And he's trying to find the end of a wall. And he, like, starts running and trying to hold onto the edge. Um... And just kind of like starts heading I'll, down uh, into I'll the town. I'll go after him. All right. He goes and like I'll finds his him. way as if he's like now following a rope somehow. He's really interested in following this rope. And he finds himself at an abandoned building um, where he mimes opening the door, but doesn't actually open the door and like walks into the real door and like thunders back, holds his head, right. looks around and goes, aha, and then like leaps through the open Can window. I... Mm hmm. Go for it. All right, now I'll just look in the window after he's done that and say, mm -hmm. that was pretty good. If you can do that kind of stuff, you might be able to make a living being a street performer, and I toss Wonder. him the silver. Do you want to hire me for my first paid mime gig? Oh, uh, sorry. I, I'm, I got to help an old man get to his daughter's niece's birthday. But that was pretty good. You should keep practicing. All right. Uh, I think we are done with this NPC. <laughs> um, the, the boat is ready to go. You guys can hop on and head over to Coxport. I thought there might be something within that, that interaction, but there really wasn't. Okay. <laughs> Just trying uh, to set a guy straight, Neil. Yeah, and you... Encouraging you him to follow his dreams. You kind of did. You kind of did. All right. Uh, you guys are on the ship and on your way to Coxport. Are you taking the donkey with you? Of course All you're right. taking the donkey with you. Uh, you arrive. Can I take the donkey with me? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You arrive in Coxport just a few hours later. It's a, a short trip across the, the, the little bay here. Um, and when you arrive, the old man points up this really steep hill and goes, my daughter's house is up there, and her daughter is having her eighth birthday party, but it's a little far to... Do you mind if I ride on the donkey again? Oh, of course, you can ride. Well, thank you. He has a little bit of trouble mounting up on the donkey, but he secures both of his canes under one arm and uh, proceeds up the hill with the two of you. Oh, you know, that rogue back there might be on to right. something. I was ready to pay him five copper to stop doing that. What everyone have against mimes, huh? Is it just because they're French? Uh, anyway, <laughs> you guys uh, head up the hill and find yourselves outside of a, a quaint little cottage in the middle, uh, at the, the top end of to Coxport. Um... You can hear the, the sounds of a party going inside. You can see the the candle lit with, uh, or the cake lit with all of its candles. 
Uh, you can hear the the royalty free version of Happy Birthday being sung inside the the little house. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the old man looks at the two of you and says, "You have helped me get here. Thank you." In addition to the greatest gift in the world, I will give each of you, well, I'll give you 10 pieces of gold and you 11 pieces of gold and a hug. Oh, well, thank you. Hmm. I'll uh, <clears throat> take the gold and the hug. He clears his throat and says, mm, first, always brush your teeth. You never know when you're going to have to speak to someone, and you don't want to have bad breath. <clears throat> Secondly, <clears throat> Are don't you forget to Are you calling these bits of, of advice gold? Mm-hmm. There's golden advice from a golden oldie himself. It's double gold, actually. <clears throat> Second, always bring a towel. You never know when you're going to need a towel. Third, always carry an extra pair of dry socks. Mm -hmm. Fourth, never break a deal. Number five, never break a deal. Number six, make sure you always keep a dry pair of socks on hand. Number seven, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Never turn down a dance that you've been asked, no matter who it's from. Uh, number eight. Good date places are always Big Ben's Brothel. You can find one in Kershwick and one in Berkshire. Best places for a date. Uh, what, what number was that? Maybe I should start over again. <laughs> number one. Never break a deal. Number two. Uh, and he continues just to prattle on about his old man advice, but occasionally forgets where he is and starts over again. Uh, and he like goes through them three times before he actually finishes his whole list of advice. The last two he whispers in Joe's ear so Elliot can't hear them. All right. I say, well, that was some good wisdom. I'll take that hug now. He gives you a hug. Good. All right. And I say, well, I hope you enjoy yourself at a, at a birthday party. Oh, I'm not staying. I'm just dropping off this card. He looks a little awkwardly around mm. and then says, but maybe you could hand it to her. I'm not exactly on good terms with my daughter. Well, it's important to be there for family, no matter what. Oh, that, well, that's exactly why I'm not on good terms with my daughter. You see, I left her and her mother for a much, much younger woman many years ago. Perhaps you could just give my niece this this card, and he fishes around and puts five copper coins in the handmade card and kind of like hands it over to Joe. Perhaps you could give this to my my niece. What do you mean you left your wife and, and daughter? Oh. You work hard. It's your the father. It's your job to work hard to provide for your children, to provide the best you can for your children, to give them the things that you never had. Excuse me, sir, but there was a, a lovely, much younger lady who offered to be my sugar mama, and I couldn't say no. I mean... Yes, you could have. Your family, you, you don't give me this family comes first thing when you left them. It is up to you, as a father, I, to provide everything you can for your kids. I am not trying to make... The hmm. best of everything. Hmm. I'm not trying to make excuses for my past failures. I am not a perfect man. I have committed many uh, accidents, mistakes. Some might call them sins. And I have many regrets, including, well, actually, 
It was the new the younger girl was quite nice to me. And I didn't have any responsibilities and she paid for everything I needed. And she died unexpectedly and I inherited all of her wealth. So it actually worked out very well. But but I I, I do feel a little bit of regret. Anyway, could you please deliver this message to my granddaughter? You had a duty to provide for your daughter. Give her the things that you didn't have. No matter what it took to climb to the top to give those to her. You need to be there to, to teach her how to succeed in the world. a fire-trapped letter. Hmm. Probably a fire-trapped letter. Me personally, Joe has no idea, so Joe's going to take the letter. All right, you take the letter. Um, you and have it. And I'll... Do you open it and read it? Knock on the door. Uh, the rest of you guys are just no, standing in the street the right in front of her. Joe immediately... Not Joe. Uh, Murray tries to turn the donkey around and kind of get it out of view before anyone answers the door. What are you doing, Elliot? I'm going to hold the donkey's uh, bridle. I'm going to oh, no, you aren't getting this. You have responsibilities as a father. All right. You may have failed them before, but you're going to stand up and be a man right now. The door opens. A woman in her mid-30s, something like that, uh, is at the door, maybe early 40s even, is at the door and kind of looks around exasperated. Her hair is a mess. She's got, like, frosting on one cheek. Uh, you notice that her, her sleeve is a little bit singed, even. <sighs> what do you need? I got kid's mm. birthday party in there, so make it quick, buddy. I got a letter from what I believe is your father for your daughter. A birthday card. She looks bewildered and takes the card from your hands. Opens it. The All five right. copper coins slide out. She catches them. My my father. Do you are you friends of his? We no. We were just hired by him to escort. Uh, uh not extort him. Uh, escort him here. Is, she starts looking around. I'll shout. Hired is a generous term. <laughs> uh, she starts looking about for <laughs> for the her father, and then shakes her head and says. Uh, I don't... Where is he? Is need like a little behind me on a donkey? Absolutely, he's right there. Okay, I'd say. I'll say isn't, isn't this he right gentleman there right on here? The donkey? She looks at him and kind of cocks her head to the side and looks at him with like vague and distant eyes and. Huh. Uh, he gives a, a sheepish gaze, and she goes, Dad? And starts approaching the the horse, uh, uh, the donkey, and says, I... Donkey. Oh, you... I'm sorry. She turns back to you. Guys. My, my father died a long time ago. I don't know who this man is, but he must be confused. Why do you at think him. he died? Well, he went out to buy cigarettes one day and he didn't come back. Mom said that he kicked the bucket. I look at him. You seriously did the going out for cigarettes maneuver? Well, I said cigars, but I guess they're more or less the same thing. The, the woman comes over and looks at this guy and goes... It, this can't be my father. It, I mean, I was only five when he left. Hey, she was five and you left her? He gives like a, a sheepish shrug and she's like, and I mean, mother always said that you, he would, uh, you, you, he, he would never leave because she, you know, she was crippled. So he, she must, he must have died. Because he would never leave a, a crippled wife with a, a five-year-old daughter and a, a one-year-old infant to, to raise on her own. 
And the old man kind of hunkers down in his clothes a little bit. And then kind of says under his breath to Elliot, Get me out of here, son. I'll give you... I'll give you some real gold. A real juicy oh, no, bit of gold. I've had it with I've had it with you and your gold. Come on, man. <laughs> oh no, you're gonna stand here and finally man up and take what you've got coming to you. I'll tell your parents that you've kidnapped an old man, young boy. Joe, do you, ha do you have anything to add to this conversation, or is it just going to be two NPCs having a heart-wrenching conversation about... Oh, it's, it's going to be the two NPCs having oh, a heart-wrenching conversation, well, The old man eventually kind of quietly says, uh, Hello, Eleanor, it's your father! And kind of reaches out his hands in a hug from atop the donkey. The uh, woman just goes over and pushes the man off the donkey... <laughs> Uh, Elliot, would you please make me a dex check for the man to see if he takes falling damage? Um, he has a dexterity score of four, five? Of five. No, he takes some falling damage here. Joe, would you roll me a d6 for falling damage? Sure. And Elliot, would you please roll me a... Uh, D6 minus one for the old man's HP. Do we conceivably have zero? Uh, minimum one. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the edge of life, but this fall off the donkey is too much for him. He slips off the side, hits his head, and blood begins to flow down the cobblestones. The woman comes over and starts screaming at him. Uh, and through this screaming, you get a pretty vivid description of what life was like for her and her mother. I mean, her her mother was a cripple. I, she I, lost both of her legs I, back in the war and uh, had to just be like a seamstress and had to like, you know, they didn't have... I, 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 raise, I raise my finger while she's doing this. Like, he's not getting off that easily. And I'll heal him. <laughs> you heal the old man? All right. He doesn't so die. He can deal with his mistakes. <laughs> You're not going to leave him to bleed out in the streets? Oh no, he's he's gonna have to deal with with this. All right. Hey, now he gets to be. I get with... him back to zero hit points. Uh, actually, you bring him all the way back up to one. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much here. So um, the the old woman, or not the old woman, the the daughter continues to bray and kick. The, the old man. Uh, in fact, you start to, you begin to get worried that he's go she's going to kick him enough to uh, knock him out or hurt him again. Don't stop it. You don't stop it. He's, he's got this coming. All right. I've, the got, old, I've got one uh, more healing if he goes down. So yeah, he the, can keep kicking him. the daughter <laughs> slash mother uh, kicks the crap out of the old man until he falls unconscious again, uh, probably deep into the negatives. All right, I'll heal him up one more time. Like That's all I can do. All right, the berating eventually comes to an end. It's been half an hour. The woman is pink in the face, and there are, like, eight kids uh, standing behind her in a semicircle watching this verbal and physical abuse of the elderly. Uh, okay, I, I look at the kids. Which one of you is a birthday girl? One of the girls raises her hand awkwardly. What are your favorite things? Uh, ponies and crossbows <laughs> and flying carpets. Neil, trying to really make it so we can't buy our birthday present. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. Okay, all right, uh, I'm gonna go down the hill into town here and look for a toy shop. Okay. Uh, you head on down the the hill towards the toy shop, leaving Elliot and the donkey behind. I'm Elliot. Uh, Joe and the donkey behind. Do I find a toy shop? Do they have? Do you, the there is a Carter? toy shop. I'm just Joe. Are you gonna go with them? With him no. to the toy shop? No. We'll stick around. All right. We, we've split the party. Um, Joe, uh, we'll start with you. 
Uh, the, the woman ha eventually relents, goes inside, and takes the children with her. Uh, unless there's something you wanted to say or do. Because you're up here hanging out, right? Yep. Yeah. So what what do you do? Oh, I'll just wait. Okay. Cool. Probably the old man didn't get healed the first round, so he's just kind of out of it on the ground. Yeah. Or old man's not doing so well. Uh, Murray is not doing so well. Anyway, uh, Elliot, you, you make it to the toy shop down the hill. You're there. All right. I walk inside like I own the place, like an A&D businessman, and I look around at the stock. I, I look around for the proprietor. Okay. There is the proprietor. It is a lady uh, in her early 20s. I go, you there, you work here, right? I'm looking for a pony or a crossbow or a flying carpet or some combination of two or more. This is a children's toy shop. We do not, we have toy ponies and we have actual carpets, but we don't have crossbows. Those are dangerous. It could get someone killed. Wait a minute. Why does a toy shop have carpets? I mean, they've got like a carpet in the shop that they'll be willing to sell you, even though it's not what oh, they're normally okay. selling. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Toy pony. Show me what you got. She uh, sells, brings you to a, a wooden pony. It's about this big. Okay. Oh, is that the only one? She pulls out another one. It's slightly different colors and patterns because of the wood grain that it's using. And then she takes you over to a whole set of different, like a wooden ponies, little carved guys. All right, how much do these run here? Two copper, three copper, three copper. All right. Uh, I'll get four of them at four copper each. If you really quickly carve into the hind quarter of each one some little cutesy rainbow or heart or something like that yep she will uh take the the ponies back in the the back door where there's a little shop where there's an elf shackled up to the the workbench being forced to make toys for her um and then comes out a few moments later with the altercations made or alterations made all right, so that's four copper each, so mm -hmm. 16, 16 copper. so 1.6 silver. Mm -hmm. I'll make 16. it two silver if you have bows. What? Bows? bows. I told you, crossbows are dangerous weapons. You can't be giving them to children. A gift bow. And yes, no, you, you can. cannot they gift children crossbows. It's dangerous. They could get hurt. They could put an eye out with one of those things. They have to learn. You want them learning about bows on the street? Anyways, I'm talking about a gift bow. A fancy, I told you, you can't give a fancy children weapons. bow made out of ribbon. Yeah, stop. You, look, a bow made out of ribbon wouldn't even work. It wouldn't have enough spring in it to fire anything. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just take the ponies and go. All right. You arrive back at the, the 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 house sometime later the old man is back on the horse uh, back on the pony unless joe is not going to allow him back on the pony does he have the strength to get off the ground it it takes a while i'll slowly watch it but make sure he doesn't try to take the pony anywhere all right uh and then elliot arrives back all right I march up to the door and I knock very, very decisively. The woman comes back to the door. Oh my God, you again? You're not gonna yes, tell me that my mother's second husband is here as well. No, 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 where's your daughter? What do you want with my daughter? I brought her ponies. Oh, a gift, how nice of you. Right this way. 
Um, she motions you in to where the children have set up. It's like a two pillow forts, basically, like couches and pillows and blankets and instrument implements of destruction. And then they have a whole bunch of like, I guess you can't crumple up paper. paper. What could you throw instead of like paper balls at each other if you were having like a children's play socks war? Socks or rolled up socks or stockings? Yeah, a bunch of rolled up socks. And they're just like hurling them back and forth at each other and then like ducking behind the fort. Then whenever someone gets hit with a sock, they're like out mm -hmm. and gets dragged to safety by one of the uh, other parents who are like moderating and watching over everything. All right, so the little girl whose birthday it was, I, rec I talked to her before, so I'll know which one mm -hmm. she is. Yeah, yeah you, you spot her. She's easy to tell from, apart from the others. The mother says, uh, Junior, Junior, this nice man is here with a gift for you. And Junior Back comes to over to you. Too, <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, you don't speak like a 12 year old, and you're an elf, right? So it's all. You know, you're, you're a weird other race that speaks like an adult. She's not presuming. You might be like half gnome or something. You definitely have the mannerisms of an adult. Uh, no. She's not assuming nothing about who you are. Uh, well, the, the kid comes up and looks at you with big expectant eyes. You have a gift for me? Yes, here. You and your friends can play ponies. And I give her the four carved ponies. You see, when you said ponies, she got... <gasps> and then when you hand over the carved ponies, she slumps back into her... Oh. Oh, come on. Like, Thanks, like if, if someone's like, hey, if you're a kid at a party and someone's like, hey, I got you army men, and you're like literally expecting a platoon of soldiers out there, you know they're toys. I mean, children can be difficult sometimes, and you're the strange, unknown person showing up at her door. You could be like the stories where... I just invented my little ponies for her. <laughs> you didn't... Wait, do... Is that why you had things carved in the bottoms of them? Under their hindquarters, yes. Is that what My Little Ponies have? Yeah, they each have their their little symbol on car or on the their their butt. Uh, I don't. I guess I just don't know enough about My Little Ponies. Um. All right. Well, uh, she takes the ponies. They're the called mom. cutie marks. <laughs> She takes the ponies. Um, her mom reminds her to say thank you. And she regretfully says, thank you, mister. Are you the one with my grandpa? I'm one of the people your grandpa has swindled, yes. What's swindled? Swindled is when you don't make good on a contract. What's a contract? No, not the one. I, I look over at the mother. She, she's how old, and you haven't taught her about contracts yet? She's five. Of course, I haven't taught her about contracts yet. You know, people shield their kids from these things. They think they're doing them a favor. All right. The the girl <laughs> takes the ponies, and the two of you. Exit. Uh, old man Murray is still on your donkey, average Joe. Yep. What do you do? Well, getting him back to town. You gonna take him all the way back to Berkshire? No, back to the whatever the island town uh, is. Okay, Coxport. Yeah, you guys are in Coxport. You're just at the, like it's built on a hill, so you're at like the top end of the town. Yeah, uh, but you're not pushing the old man down the hill. Not pushing the old man down oh, okay. the hill. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, well, you can wrap that. things up with the old man here and uh, head home if you want or something. And you need to know about My Little Ponies. Oh, God. Do I really want to watch this? Actually, you do. <laughs> oh, it's Patton Oswald. Yeah, that's fine. I'll definitely take a look at that later. <laughs> All right, so mute Twitch. Listen to it. <sighs> so now what? I I look at the old man. Is like I can't believe you had the uh, 
audacity to smugly give us all that advice and talk about friendship when you completely failed as a father. Oh. And a grandfather. Well, how do you think I became so wise? It's from making so many mistakes throughout my life. Now I know exactly not what to do. I'd give anything to be young again, to redo it all, to make better decisions. That's why I gave you those pieces of gold. Those are the things I've learned throughout my life that I would never read. You that I gave would those to us because you're a twit swindling cheapskate. You, you, I, I, you can't talk to your elders that way. That's rude. What do you mean I can't talk to my elders that way? Were you not listening these last 10 seconds? Maybe I'll do it again so you can pay better attention this time. He looks at you expectantly, as if you're about to say something. You're a cheapskate oh. and a swindler. Oh. If I could give you those hugs back, I would. Oh. I guess I've made another mistake. Um, and he Where starts... are you going to be spending this night? Because I want to make sure I'm not staying in the same place. I was just going to find a tavern in town. Which tavern was that? I hadn't decided yet. Would you like to share a room with me? Maybe we can work out our differences in the bedroom. Absolutely not. I don't want your bad fatherness rubbing off on me in any way whatsoever. Well. He looks a little dejected. Like he lost his only friend in the world. Listen. <sighs> You might have been able to make up for it if you actually tried instead of uh, trying to sheep off at the end instead Ooh. of confronting your daughter. It's very difficult to confront someone that you've wronged. Brings up a lot of fear and anxiety. And at my age, I just don't think I have it in me to handle something that difficult. You'll never make up for it if you don't. Um... Well, well, grow a pair, old man. He turns around, dismounts from the donkey slowly and starts walking up to the house door. He gives a rap with both of his canes. Uh, the door opens. His daughter is there. She slaps him across the face. He begins to plead his case to her. Um, it grows loud uh, and argumentative, socially awkward lines such as uh, you're the reason I had to work in that industry at such a young age are exchanged, followed by, but she covered all of my meals and she was so nice, followed by like, you know, just a bunch of heart wrenching stuff. We don't need to get into it. It's more than I can handle right now. Um, and, uh, yeah. All right, I go back down to the dock and I go looking for our erstwhile mime. Uh, your erstwhile mime was back in the last town, unfortunately. Oh, darn it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna pay him to rob this guy. <laughs> Well, uh, here you are. You're in Coxport. Maybe we should take a break here. It's been about an hour and a half since our last break. Uh, so we will see you guys on the other side of our break with a little bit. I cut to break too soon. We'll see you guys on the other side of our break with a little bit more shenanigans. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs> yeah, bye.